The Honor Magic VS is the new foldable phone from Honor and is packed full of high specs to beat the other folding phones on the market. So can it compete with them? We'll just take a look. So Honor released their first folding phone at the Magic V back in January, but it was a China launch only, so most of us didn't get to see it in person. Thankfully, they've brought us the new Magic VS that not only has plenty of improvements, but it's also going to see a global release. So first of all, we'll take a look at the design. It of course has an external display and then unfolds to reveal a much larger one, but a lot of thought has gone into its size, its weight and its overall comfort to hold. The Honor Magic VS weighs just 261 grams for the leatherback model and then 267 grams for the glassback model that I've got here. Now the leatherback model is actually the lightest folding phone on the market at the moment and although the glassback is actually 4 grams heavier than the Z Fold 4, it does have a much larger battery capacity and this makes it worth it for those of you that do care about the weights. Now, when it comes to the folding mechanism, it's refreshing to see such a great design despite this only being their second foldable release. The Magic VS has changed to a lightweight gearless hinge, it's made of a single piece and using aerospace grade materials, it looks great, it fits together well and it gives a perfect fold without any gaps. The Honor Magic V had 92 components that made up his hinge, whereas on the Honor Magic VS it's been reduced all the way down to just 4. Now visually it's just flat and perfectly held together, if I place a thin piece of paper in the fold I can happily pick it up using the paper and this shows you just how tight and secure it is. The Honor Magic VS has also been tested and it's able to withstand over 400,000 folds, so that will be folding it 100 times a day for 10 years. Now it's also been designed to protect against water splashes as well as dust, but we don't have any official IP ratings. On this model we've got the glass back and as you can see it's black and it's very polished. I like this colour as it's a more sophisticated look and with all the glass it feels very premium to hold but there's still plenty of grip. Now for those of you concerned about fingerprints, of course you are going to get them on the back thanks to the glass but it does come with a plastic protective case for the rear panel which solves the issue as well as protecting your phone. Overall it just feels very well built and thanks to the smoothness and the curves it's a pleasure to hold in the hand. Now, the camera module is a vertical rectangle and to be honest the shape is pretty basic but it works well and it blends in with the phone's sophisticated look. If we look closer at the lenses we have a 3D lens feather deco and although it's very subtle it looks good. And when it comes to the cameras the primary is a 54 megapixel wide angle with an aperture of f1.9 and it's using the Sony IMX800 sensor. We also get a 50 megapixel ultra wide and macro camera and this has an aperture of f2.0. And then we get an 8 megapixel telephoto with an aperture of f2.4 and 3 times optical zoom. And then finally, we've got the LED flash and the flicker sensor. Now it takes photos with a maximum resolution of 8768 by 6144, and we can record at 4K videos at 60 frames a second, as well as 10 bit log footage. The front external display comes in at 6.45 inches, it's a 120Hz OLED display with an impressive resolution of 2560 by 1080 and this gives us 431 pixels per inch. We get a peak brightness of 1200 nits, we've got nice even bezels with rounded corners and this delivers a screen to body ratio of 90% and an aspect ratio of 21 by 9. We've also got 1920Hz PWM dimming to reduce the flicker and prevent eye strain and if we take a look against another phone here using a high shutter speed on the camera you can really see the difference. We've got the selfie shooter in the form of a punch hole camera. This is a 16 megapixel wide angle with an aperture of f2.45. It can shoot 1080p videos and it takes photos at a resolution of 4608 by 3456. If we open it up the external display switches off and we switch to the main internal display. This is a 7.9 inch flexible OLED with a high resolution of 2272 by 1980. And this gives us 381 pixels per inch. The main inner display is a 90Hz display, so of course it's not as high as 120 but it still gives a nice smooth experience and it's better than a standard 60Hz display and we get a peak brightness of 800 nits. And we also get 1920Hz PWM dimming on the main display as well as some nice even bezels around the edge. As you can see we've got another selfie shooter on the main display and this is a 16 megapixel punch hole camera. Now personally I would like to see people just do away with the selfie camera on the internal display. I've got 
got one on the outside, so I really don't need it internally. Overall though, it's nice and responsive and having the much larger display, it makes it great to access as well as enjoy all your applications. The larger keyboard on a folding display is just a pleasure to use for me as I hate the small keyboards and when replying to emails and messages, I tend to fold it halfway and then I use it like a laptop, which allows me to type so much faster. Now, when it comes to the center part of the screen, you can see a small dip down the center where the screen folds. You can also feel it when you're swiping across, but of course, this is the same with all foldable phones. It's just a dip though, and there's no creasing of the display, so this means that you only really see it when you're looking at an angle, and for normal use, looking head-on, it's a perfect display. Powering the device, we have the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. And they've coupled it with a choice of 8GB of RAM with 256 storage, or alternatively, you can choose 12GB of RAM with 256 or 512 storage. It's powered by a 5000mAh battery, and this is a larger capacity than any other foldable out there by at least 500mAh, which is of course great to see. We also get Honor's 66W supercharger, but unfortunately, we don't have wireless or reverse wireless charging. Many people want a foldable device to enjoy media on a larger scale, and the Honor Magic VS also comes with symmetrical dual stereo speakers. They're certified by IMAX enhanced and processed with DTSX. They sound good and they go loud enough. They don't produce huge amounts of bass, but they produce enough to stop that tinny sound that we're normally getting from smartphones. The only comment I've got here is that when holding the phone the portrait way up, the sound is a little bit to the left as both speakers are actually on that side. But if I turn the phone at 90 degrees, we now have a speaker on each side and it sounds great. For phone speakers, they sound great. It just would have been nice to have one speaker on the left and then the other speaker on the right. The phone is shipping with Magic OS 7 based on Android 12, but unfortunately, this isn't actually the finalized version, so I'm restricted to what I can show you today in terms of the software as well as performance. The point in today's video is to show you the hardware and what Honor have achieved, and overall, I'm impressed. For what's only their second release in the foldable market, it does feel very refined, and they haven't just released a phone for the sake of it to try and gain some market share. Now we've got a sturdy, well-built phone that looks great and feels comfortable to hold. The hinge works perfectly and gives us the perfect fold that we need from a foldable phone. The larger battery capacity of 5,000 milliamp hours is great and it's considerably more than the other folding phones out there, which is what we want when we've got a bigger display to power. Now another problem we have today is that I don't actually know the launch price, but on the positive side, the China launch has literally just happened, so you can go ahead and check that out via the link in the description, and I'll also add the price to the description as soon as I know it. Now, the original Magic V was launched at £1,150 or $1,575, so I'll assume it's around that ballpark, but probably slightly higher. The global version isn't ready just yet, and it's actually going to be coming next year, and that's the reason I don't have the finished software yet, but of course, I'll be taking another look when we're ready for the global launch. Now, overall though, I'm impressed with the phone, and I'm excited for this global release, and I just wanted to give you guys a good look at what we've got to come. Now, of course, if you've got any questions or there's anything I've missed, then just ask them down in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But I'd also like to know what you guys think about this phone and who out there is going to be getting one. But thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, smash a thumbs up. If you didn't hit the thumbs down twice and I'll see you guys in the next one.